mostly focusing on security for apps like O365 and Gmail. I'm Eliza Berry. I'm Marketing Director for Richie Mae Technology Solutions, and we also have JT, our Executive Director of Cybersecurity. He's going to start off today by walking us through some trends and tips um, in the sort of picture of cybersecurity of the media and entertainment industry right now. Um, and then our partner, David Wall with Managed Methods is going to jump in and talk specifically about what Managed Methods does to um, solidify your uh, cloud app security. We've partnered with Managed Methods with several of our clients, uh, mostly in the media and entertainment industry and also in financial services. And uh, we work really great together. So we're excited to share some easy tools you can use to tighten up that security. Um, as usual on most of these things, uh, all the participants are gonna be on mute. So if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the chat. Um, Alisa and I uh, will be looking through those chat questions and we'll either pop them in at the end or if they're relevant to what we're talking about during the presentation, we'll pop up and ask those for you. Um, there's also a survey after the webinar, it's really easy, just two yes or no questions. So make sure to answer that um, those questions when it pops up. It helps us improve our webinars in the future. And then we also will send an email with the presentation materials and a recording that you can access this webinar too. So um, if you miss a point or you wanna go back and watch the short demo again, then um, you can go ahead and do that. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to JT so that he can talk about the trends. All right, well, thank you, and welcome everybody to our, our webinar today. <clears throat> so on today's agenda, I wanted to give a little overview around uh, who Richie May is. You may or may not have heard of us, uh, as well as just what uh, was going on in the uh, media entertainment space around content protection and some of the trends we're seeing around cybersecurity. And as she mentioned, we're going to pass it off to David, and he's going to let you know a little bit about managed methods and, and the tool set there. So a little bit about Richie May. So we've actually been in business since 1985, and we're a uh, focused uh, business advisory and consulting firm uh, with, with offices in Los Angeles and Denver, Colorado. And uh, in the technology solutions group, we're focused on a number of different areas. Um, the parts that we're going to talk about and touch on today are around cybersecurity and, and cloud services. Uh, many of our clients are looking on how they can move their content workflows and create more of a variable cost, pre variable predictable cost model within their businesses and their productions uh, through the use of, of cloud and cloud services. So, the state of the industry, and this slide comes from the Verizon Data Breach Report. Uh, in, in 2018, uh, the, the United States saw roughly over 40,000 cyber-related incidents. Uh, and those, those incidents by far and large impacted the public sector. So that could be city government, state government, uh, the federal government. Uh, but the second largest impacted industry was the media and entertainment space. And this was an interesting uh, change in the trends because for as long as I've been following uh, the Verizon data breach report, uh, typically the, the second uh, place category would go to financial services. But in this past year, uh, we saw media entertainment climb up. And I think there's a couple different reasons uh, behind that. Um, the, the first one being is, is content uh, creators have moved more towards um, uh, OTT technologies to, to transfer and distribute content. Uh, many of those models, those financial models, are uh, turning less dependent on subscriptions and more dependent on data collections and analytics uh, from a marketing perspective. And that becomes a, a ripe honeypot for um, threat actors to, to harvest. Uh, the other area that I think has driven this is that as we continue to digitize in the space, it's much easier for uh, threat actors to try to disrupt and hold organizations ransom. There's a number of uh, organizations that we've talked to and worked with in the media entertainment space that have been hit with ransomware and, and are looking to either move their content to the cloud or uh, keep better track of those, those assets that they have 
as they move through some of these different technologies. Uh, one of the interesting uh, findings coming out of that is where do these attacks come from? And the, the prime area that we're seeing this come in is, is from phishing, right? Uh, the, the, the threat actors are actively targeting um, content creators and producers based on their, their LinkedIn profiles and reaching out and, and trying to prey on that human element. And one of the interesting things there is, is that <clears throat> when, when we look at when a company has a cybersecurity incident, um, nearly half of them uh, has impacted their productivity, their ability to actually operate the business and keep the, the cash register open, if you will. And many of us think about uh, a data breach or a cyber incident or content loss in, in, a, in a point in time mindset. And, and, and the real issue here is it isn't just the point in time. What happens is, is those costs actually carry on for multiple years after the fact uh, and can really have some negative consequences. So <clears throat> what's going on to help combat some of these, these, these trends? Well, uh, many of you have probably heard of the MPAA best practices guidelines and the MPA, or I shouldn't say MPAA anymore, it's the MPA. Um, but the MPA's guidelines on uh, physical and digital security. <clears throat> well, those, um, those, that framework was, a, uh, they partnered with uh, CDSA and they created the Trusted Partner Network Certification. And that, that framework is really what's driving um, a lot of the design uh, requirements from a, <clears throat> a network segregation perspective, as well as what approved vendors have to do to be able to manage content uh, and, and work with those assets, either from a, a pre-production, production, or post-production perspective. And underlying through all of that, right, is, is how we utilize some of our different cloud technologies, be it Microsoft Office 365 or G Suite. The second trend, and this is one that, that many of our uh, media entertainment clients are, are not necessarily prepared for is the California CCPA. And this is the Consumer uh, Privacy Act that goes into effect in January of next year. And <clears throat> where, where this really becomes interesting, and there was just a memo released by the state uh, earlier uh, here in the month of October. And really what they're, they're expounding on is that this law is designed to look at organizations that are collecting consumer data. And that data could be biometric information, it could be social media connections, it could be demographic information, email addresses, IP addresses, you name it. If you're collecting it to uh, create a profile of around the consumer, it's actually in scope for CCPA. Now, there are some carve outs, right? Uh, uh, if your company has less than 50,000 records or um, you know less than 50% of your uh, annual revenues derive from demographic sales, there, there are some uh, limits on, on how this impacts you. But ultimately, underneath the CCPA, you have to have uh, the ability to look at where you're storing that data, who's accessed that information, and, and be able to provide that back to the consumer and, and, and let them know, here's what data we've collected about you. Um, if they request you to delete that data uh, underneath the right to be forgotten clauses, you need to be able to purge that information and <clears throat> have an auditable record that you've taken those steps. So the, the other area that we touched on earlier was around uh, ransomware. And <clears throat> what's, what's really uh, troubling with this trend is that we've seen uh, a sharp increase. Uh, ransomware really started hitting the news headlines in 2017. And it really uh, ramped up and followed what we saw in, in the Bitcoin market. As Bitcoin increased in uh, value, the value for the bad guys to hit someone with ransomware also increased. And then as that, that cryptocurrency market kind of bottomed out in uh, late 2017, early 2018, we saw the trend kind of move away a little bit from ransomware, uh, but year over year. So from uh, 2018 into 2019, there's some, some recent uh, findings that came out that, that showed a, a, a nearly 77% increase in ransomware from, from the year prior to today. Um, 
And when you look at those kinds of st statistics, uh, it, it can be really troubling. Um, you know, many of the, the uh, individuals that I talk to in this space, there's actually a media entertainment company that I, I ran into about a month ago that, that said, hey, we, we've been hit. We, we get hit about once a quarter. Uh, we pay the ransom and we just continue to move on. Uh, there, there was a story that hit the headlines uh, mid-summer this year, uh, a mortgage banking company out of, of Texas, they were hit and it shut their operation down for an entire week. They ended up paying $1.6 million uh, to get back in business. So with, with some of these headlines that we're seeing, uh, it is pretty easy to see that, that um, the threat actors are out there. They're trying to take data. They're trying to monetize that data either through encrypting it and, and preventing you having access to it or um, through, through uh, straight theft and really having the ability to um, control those data assets, look at where those assets go uh, and, and get alerting on any, if any time that those assets are moved in an appropriate way uh, is, is really important. So the, the, there, there's a lot of talk about going to the cloud. And if, if you've been to any recent uh, meeting entertainment events, you'll see you know, big names like Microsoft and Amazon uh, in the space uh, talking about moving your entire production workloads to the cloud. And the, the trend is, is going that, that direction. Uh, you know, if you look at just the overall spend and revenues that these organizations have, have acquired, um, nearly uh, almost a 15% a growth from uh, 2017 and 2018, uh, we're going to see cloud services being valued at nearly 117 billion dollars by by 2021. So this these are these are uh, areas that we should be focused on, and and really the the economics driver behind this is the fact that you can add variable, predictable costs to your projects. So instead of going out and making a massive capital investment on a large storage array, or a large rendering farm, and you're able to say, if I access those resources for this project, it's going to cost me X. And once the project's done, I don't have to maintain it. I don't have to worry about it just sitting idle. I can actually <clears throat> turn it off and then wait for the next project to come in and then turn it back up. And so th this really uh, creates a, a predictable um, low cost model for you and you can actually Parallelize your cost as you as you work on different uh, content. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to David and let him talk a little bit about uh, who Manage Methods is and what their solution provides from a, a visibility and control perspective uh, around content and assets uh, in the cloud. David, thank you very much, JT, and. Uh... Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for some of you, depending on what part of the what part of the country you're in. Um, we appreciate this opportunity to share with you today a little bit about who Managed Methods is and what we do, and uh, our our great partnership we have with JT and Eliza and the team at Richie May. Oh, let's start with who is Managed Methods. Just a quick uh, introduction. We are a cloud application security platform. Uh, some of you may have heard the term CASB uh, or cloud access security broker uh, tossed around in the world of cybersecurity circles or analyst groups like Gartner or uh, Forrester and others using the term. We try to just simplify it and say that we're a cloud application security platform that is built 100% in the cloud for cloud applications. And we do it through the use of uh, application programming interfaces, APIs, directly into the cloud applications we support. Instead of using agents or proxies or uh, physical software extensions that have to be uh, deployed, installed, and maintained, uh, we believe that an API approach is a much more flexible and yet secure approach to helping our customers. Uh, the company is headquartered in Boulder, Colorado. We were started a little over five years ago. Uh, and we began shipping our first product in early 2017. Uh, it's a privately held company with a, a veteran leadership team coming from the world of data management and cybersecurity. Customers across variety of, of organizations and uh, industry sectors. We work with companies in the media and entertainment space, retail, financial services, 
uh, and education. Really any organization out there using cloud-based applications for their fundamental email and file sharing capabilities, we can help support with. And we've been, we've been doing that in tandem with the team at Richie May uh, since the spring of 2018. So let's talk about the strategic focus we have here at Manage Methods. Uh, I alluded to that just momentarily. We are focused on securing the two most widely used cloud-based email and file sharing uh, platforms in the world. And that is Microsoft's Office 365 environment in the cloud, which would be Exchange Online Email, OneDrive for file sharing, and SharePoint for file sharing and collaboration. And then of course, Google's equivalent from Alphabet, uh, which would be the Google G Suite, which in, consists of applications like Gmail, Drive, Shared Drives, which was formerly known as Team Drives, and of course, all the applications therein. These are the two most dominating SaaS productivity apps used worldwide in business today. Um, Google has made significant strides in the last uh, five years, really coming on strong in the past 18 months. Part of that has to do with leadership changes now that Alphabet has brought in uh, former Oracle executive Thomas Curran to lead the charge for Google Cloud Platform. And I think that they're, they're, they're very much committed now, not just at an education and government and free consumer level, but really committed to providing a, a very good enterprise grade package. Uh, near the end of 2018, and this number now is significantly ro rose, but over 5 million paid enterprise subscribers in the G Suite world. So rapid adoption of Office 365 has been occurring over the past five years as Microsoft is migrating people from legacy exchange on-premise to cloud-based exchange online. But Google has also now come in to the market space uh, very much as a dominant player. So Microsoft still, of course, is by far the most dominant because of their, their legacy footprint, but really a lot of new organizations. And even I'm sure a lot of you today that may be on this call that um, are an Office 365 shop, JT and I see a lot of organizations, especially in media entertainment, that have hybrid mixed bags. So they may be using Office 365 Exchange Online for their primary email, but then they may have Google Drive in the mix, they may have Dropbox, they may have Box, so they may have a variety of cloud applications in that mix. So why is it that cloud app data in the media and entertainment space is now becoming an er a focal point, an area of risk uh, attention and, and mitigation. Number one, rapid adoption of cloud-based applications because of a highly mobile workforce is using multiple devices, having the d ability to access that data anywhere, anytime, anyplace. What this does though is puts your organization to more risk exposure, uh, whether it be your clients, sensitive information, financial data, financial records, personal identifiable information, whether it be details of contracts, whether it be your business dealings, whether it be information that gets scanned in, we find that there, there's a lot of visual information that gets scanned in or brought in through documents and or image uploads. And all of these things, of course, tie into reputation management because it is a small community. Uh, and when you're in the M&E world, um, if one organization gets a bad reputation for uh, being breached or security, issues that could lead to uh, the bottom line reputation. And, and so what are these threats? And, and JT um, you know, just laid this out very, very nicely. It all boils down to threats from the external threat actors, whether it be ransomware attacks through malware and malicious attachments through phishing, whether it be uh, unauthorized uh, content sharing or internal types of threats where either intentional data loss and leakage out of an organization through file sharing or emails, or whether it be through unintentional, because many of users, many of the things we see today uh, occur through somebody just being careless or not thinking through and they click on and open the, the email that came in or they look at the file that just came in and they, they don't have that uh, proper training. So we look at all of these aspects together to try and help bring together a more um, comprehensive security posture, if you would. So what are our key differentiators uh, about our platform and our architecture? And, and we'll jump into then how it works. Because we don't use proxies or agents or extensions, we can be deployed in a matter of minutes. Uh, in many cases, we can activate 
uh, a cloud connection with our customer's account in 10 minutes or less, and you begin to get immediate visibility and control into your Google G Suite or Office 365 or Slack or Box environment. Again, no impact on your users. Uh, we are deployed in many, many cases, I'd say 90 plus percent of the time, customers activate us into their production environment because we're not touching anything out of the box and we are not uh, impacting the user experience. We're not sitting in between them and getting their work done. And that's because of the architecture. And we were the first recognized uh, CASB vendor in the industry to support cloud-based email, such as Gmail and Office 365 Exchange Mail, um, outside of just traditional file sharing. So because of these things, we have a very, very quick uh, value return because customers can see it immediately, begin to take control immediately, and it's, it's a very quick return on the investment. So how does this work? Many cases how it works is JT and his organization introduces to one of their clients. We will activate a free cloud risk assessment, and we break it down into three areas. Threat prevention, looking for malicious, or as JT talked about earlier, weaponized Microsoft Word doc attachments, which has become one of the, the biggest probably threat vectors out there, uh, still in the number one category through email. So scanning all of the email attachments and looking for phishing attempts, whether it be a malicious attachment that's been weaponized or, or compromised, whether it be a suspicious URL. Um, in that same Verizon data breach report, they talk about that the majority of email uh, threats that come in and, and exposed to ransomware or, and or malicious um, activity is a result of clicking on a compromised or uh, false URL. So our threat prevention approach is comprehensive in that we look at the email, the contents of the email, look for all URLs, scan those URLs. In addition, scan any attachment for malware and other malicious information. In addition, we do that with any file that gets uploaded into the cloud sharing environment as well as shared into your environment. We then take a comprehensive uh, data security approach and apply standard data loss prevention, data leakage prevention types of measures to analyze all the data, whether it be in email, body of email, attachment of email, or files uploaded or shared into your cloud sharing drives, such as OneDrive, Google Drive, Box, et cetera. And you can pretty much apply any type of content inspection rule, whether that be looking at regulated, regulated data for things such as personal identifiable information, uh, dealing with like these new privacy laws in California that JT alluded to, whether it be PCI data, or it may be more on the HR harassment uh, harm side of things, looking for objectionable content, uh, inappropriate content, um, inappropriate maybe harassment or communications between employees. And we can do this with the industry's most advanced optical character recognition and machine learning around our uh, proprietary DLP engine. Whoops, apologize. Uh, last but not least, and I'll show this as we jump into the demo, uh, we can provide comprehensive account monitoring and look for compromised accounts, login activity, and, and look at even where people are accessing from. And this is another uh, large component of when you look at the threat protection and the data security, wrapping it together with a comprehensive view of, of who, who is accessing the data and when they are accessing that data. Uh, be, before I jump over into the demonstration, I'll, I'll just share that, you know, if anyone within the audience today or that sees this recording today would like to learn more about how we can provide a free risk assessment for your environment, you can reach out to your, your contacts within Richie May. Of course, JT would be happy to take that call from you, but many of you have your own dedicated Richie May uh, advisor. Uh, or you can also click on this link and it'll be provided to the Richie May team to get in touch with you to help you uh, take advantage of this free risk assessment. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a quick look uh, at our platform and, and how this works today. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the screens over. And I'm gonna just jump into a, a demonstration environment that we have set up here that is looking at a fictitious Office 365 organization. As you see up here in the upper corner of the screen, we're talking about Microsoft's Office 365 today. Of course, as I said, we can support uh, platforms such as Google's Gmail, Google Drive, all part of the G Suite. We can support Box, Dropbox, Slack, and other popular uh, applications used for file sharing and collaboration. So if we start today and we look at just, let's look at 
a couple simple use cases that we just talked about. Let's start with threats. Here at the high level dashboard, we give you a summary of all the activity in your environment. But what I'd like to do is come over here and look at the, the side over here of the email summary, and we're gonna look at diff different types of threats. So specifically, within this last time frame we're looking at, we've had three phishing attempts. So with that, I will click on that link for three phishing attempts. And if you'll notice, it's brought me to our emails tab in which we are looking uh, at the Office 365 Exchange Online email and boxes. So here we have done a predefined filter that's looked uh, for phishing attempts in this defined time frame. It's filtered out. You see we have three in the environment and they are labeled as such. Whereas if I look at this uh, particular item here, it will give me a pop-up that explains to me the pertinent information of who sent it, was uh, who are the recipients, internal, external, and as well as we can then see what the, the threat risk was in this. And it was a compromised uh, URL. So using in this particular case, we use multiple types of backend engines to analyze. This was coming through the Google Safe Browsing, which is now known as WebRisk uh, from Google, to analyze this particular known URL that is a bad actor. So you can quickly get a, a, a concise view of what's happening. Um, I'll back out to the high-level email tab, and I can simply view all phishing emails in the environment with a click of a button, or I could do a quick filter to say I want to look for potentially malicious messages in my environment. And with a quick couple clicks of a filter, I can then come in and look and see what particular risks are involved in the environment and why they were involved. And this one was flagged because of a, uh, a filter we have set up using a risk pattern to look for the Canadian passports uh, because of uh, some work we are doing right now currently with some companies in the financial services industry in Toronto. So you can use the emails tab to not only look at all emails in your environment, whether they be phishing, whether they have malicious, whether they have email attachments, uh, and look at the potential risk associated with those, but you can also conduct live searches where you can scan on the fly any particular mailbox or groups of mailboxes for information that you may want to inspect or remove from the environment. This is where uh, I like to say the HR use cases come into play. Uh, we have a particular client that we're working with right now in the uh, Southern California area uh, that recently had an incident um, involving an employee sent something to all company employees that was not deemed appropriate, HR wanted it removed. So they used the live email search to see who had that information, which mailbox it was in, um, and, and to get that information uh, removed and remediated from the environment. So another scenario that we would look at from a threat protection would be that of malware and any types of attachments, files, uploads, shares, et cetera. And we scan them through several third-party industry uh, malware engines to analyze them for potential malicious, uh, suspicious, other types of things. And you would be provided a threat score, full report uh, on that information, and then the ability to take action on a particular item by either deleting it from this environment or quarantining it. You can either do this manually or you can have automated policy and remediation setup that would then take action upon these things. So as I jump over to the policies tab, you can then see the violations of the past 24 hours. You can see how these things were handled, what remediation, if any, was taken at that time, um, whether it be sending a notification to a user, whether it be taking quarantine action, whether it be revoking a file share, all of these things can be done automated through the process. Uh, last but not least here, I'll take an example of just simply looking at compromised accounts or uh, inappropriate uh, access. Of course, we can certainly look at you know, individual files within OneDrive or SharePoint. We can look at third-party apps that may be tied in. We can spend time in our risk engine looking at the full uh, data loss prevention capabilities and all of the, the filters that are associated with that. But one of the many things that comes from a lot of our uh, customers right now, especially in media and entertainment, has to do with that of, of login attempts and access and looking for compromised login. So if we come into the filter here and we look for um, you know, login activity that may be considered suspicious. With a quick filter of apply, we get a quick list of these activities and we can see why it was uh, considered a risk and what was happening. So in this particular case, a suspicious event upon login, you also can see that they have information in this account that has been flagged uh, for risk. So we can come in and see this particular individual account. We can see the IP addresses that it had accessed, locations it's been accessed from, 
and if anything has been flagged for risk. In this case, over 77 files in Outlook alone have been flagged for risk, as well as you can see they've had 48 situations of malware. And in this case, 31 of them all came from outside email. Of course, I could simply click on this number 31 and it would jump us straight into the accounts themselves uh, in the email tab and show me the emails that have been all flagged for either malware or other suspicious threats. The other big thing that we can help you do within your environment is do analysis through the login analyzer. So the login analyzer will allow us to look at all logins across an environment to help find that needle in the haystack. So I could come in and pick something such as impossible travel from a typical location. So what this is is simply that there was multiple login attempts coming um, from two different locations that are physically impossible to have those typical types of logins occurring between two different locations. Uh, as you see here, the first login began at September 17th, um, and then it traveled you know, to a, a basically from Norway all the way to California within the same login attempts. So this might lead to suspicious behavior of either unauthorized use of VPNs uh, or compromised uh, accounts in that situation. We can also uh, analyze this data to look for login failures and simply give me an insight as to how many failure attempts, where are they coming from, and who they were, the device, the application they were, they were searching from. It gives administrators uh, and security administrators much more flexibility and power and control uh, over the environment uh, and who is um, trying to you know, compromise this environment. Um, of course, full risk analysis engine. This has been a big area within the, uh, the M&E industry with people we've been working with through JT and, and Richie May in which they want to look for content of certain types of file types. Uh, they want to look for, you know, whether it be movie information, whether it be uh, vi video files, whether it be large image files, um, whether we're looking for personal identifiable information, PCI, you name it, anything you want to look for within your email inbox environment and or your file sharing environment, we can do that uh, through our, our risk engine. And then create filters, of course, to look at that information and provide reporting and remediation on that. So the goal of managed methods is to help give great visibility and control within your, say in this case, Microsoft Office 365 environment, OneDrive and SharePoint, to give you the ability to prevent threats, whether it be malware, phishing attempts, things that lead to ransomware, prevent data loss, whether it be intentional or accidental data loss, and to analyze account access and usage behavior. How are files in your environment being accessed or shared, shared to outside an organization, uh, shared from the outside in, which is sometimes a, uh, a ticking time bomb waiting for somebody to click and open it, and finding out why, you know, why are things happening the way they are, giving greater visibility and control above and beyond what you may get from either your native uh, Microsoft or Google licensing security levels, or to give you an alternative to the more advanced licensing options that Microsoft and Google may provide at a more robust feature functionality and at a lower cost. With that said, I'm going to turn the turn it back over to our, our moderator. And if there is any questions from anyone in the audience, or if you'd like to learn more, please contact Richie May and JT and his team at Rick, Richie May Technology Solutions will be happy to help you out. Thank you, David. Um, so again, thank you for everyone who came out and we'll just give you a couple of minutes to type any questions in the chat or actually in the questions box. I'm also looking at that. Um, and if we don't get any within the next couple of minutes, um, as David said, feel free to email any of us. Um, info at richiemay.com will get any of those questions to us. And um, we will get back to you as soon as we can um, with those. So again, thank you and make sure to participate in the poll after the uh, webinar and to look out for that email with the uh, recording and slides, feel free to forward that around to um, in, inside your company to anyone who might benefit from this presentation also, and be sure to look out for invitations to future webinars with 
us and for managed methods. So thank you again for attending and we'll see you next time.